I've got some good news for you, brothers and sisters. The Dash network is now worth attacking. Dash core developer Ujin M6 has recently posted that a sort of DDoS, that is a distributed denial of service attack, is being carried out on the Masternode network now. Now, only about 100 masternodes, or about 2.8% of the network, was running on hardware that could not handle this. Ujin guesses that these VPSs were something like a dollar a month, maybe, and could not handle the CPU usage and bandwidth that the attack uh, provided. Now, if your master node was one of those, Ujin also included in his post a fix that you could perform on it remotely to try to mitigate its effects. Interesting to think that DDoS attacks are not free to perform, and interesting to think that whatever this person or persons is spending, that it is worth the money to them. Thank you for the test. In other development updates, a new software version was pushed between last week's show and this show. That is 12.1.3, and it was pushed as a fix to a sort of crashing problem that some masternodes were experiencing, I believe when executing certain tasks, I'm not entirely sure. But the fix was pushed, uh, about 87% of masternodes have updated to it already, and that meant that instant send was able to be turned back on. If you didn't notice, <laughs> yes, during the period between when 12.1.3 was pushed and three or four days after that, instant send was turned off. If you are wondering to yourself, how could such a thing be? Uh, you likely don't yet know about Dash Sporks and how they work. To learn more about them, I would invite you to watch this episode that I had with lead developer of Dash, Evan Duffield. And that reminds me, I would like to tell you that if you did watch that episode, you may recall that at the time, Evan had said that moving the sporking capability from its current, uh, uh, basically being executed by a handful of key holders to a network decentralized vote, that that was planned for the 12.1 release. Now, obviously that's not happened. There is no, There are no votes happening on the network as to whether certain sporks should be turned on or off. And I reached out to Evan about this, and he has said that the priority has been bumped forward. That is, moving Sporks to a network vote of some kind has been pushed to likely a 12.2 release. I hope to have more information about that for you in future episodes. Now let's go to business and headlines. I'd like to share a bit of information with you that I found out at Anarchapulco, actually. I was speaking with Thomas from Belgium, and Thomas from Belgium said to me, you know, it's maybe not surprising this Dash price rally because certainly you saw the Dash mention on the Casey Research newsletter a few weeks ago. And I said, no, what's that? He said, you know of the investor Doug Casey? I said, of course, Doug Casey. And he said, well, in Doug Casey's research newsletter that came out recently, he recommended looking into Dash, and it turns out that that is true. I found a copy of the newsletter on the Casey Research website, and the newsletter is entitled Meet Bitcoin Jesus, and it says, and I quote, Fortunately, Roger told me about a new cryptocurrency that can protect your privacy more effectively than Bitcoin. It's called Dash. We recommend you look into it. Oh, Roger Veer. In addition, at about this same time, Jeff Berwick, remember the host of Anarchast? He also has an investor newsletter called The Dollar Vigilante, and he included a Dash mention and my interview with him in that particular newsletter at that time. So I just thought that you may be interested to know that we may have some sort of idea of where new Dash investors are coming from. In other business news, two large exchanges have added new Dash trading pairs. And no, this is not the major exchange, 
that our treasury funded integration for uh, a couple of months ago, these happened all on their own. So first is Bitfinex. Now Dash used to be on Bitfinex in the way long time ago, and they took us off after uh, Dash had too low trading volume. Well, Dash is back with trading pairs for Bitcoin and the US dollar. As well, on the exchange BTCE, uh, Dash was already being traded on BTCE with Bitcoin and the US dollar, but they have just added the trading pairs Ruble, Litecoin, and Euro. And then finally, in business news, I have an update on the sort of wall of coins uh, outage or, or problems of sorts that were experienced over the last week. I reached out to Ryan Taylor, who is the, or was, I guess the integration is complete, was the project manager for integrating Dash into Wall of Coins. And he says that Wall of Coins was affected by the Amazon Web Services outage that you may have heard about. It was, I guess, kind of a big deal. So apparently a good deal of software was reset by the Amazon Web Services outage, Wall of Coins included, and at that same time, their phone system went down, and these two things happening concurrently it caused a whole lot of heartache and headache and trouble. But uh, within the following days, Wall of Coins employee Albert Arellanes made a post on the Dash Pay subreddit explaining how things were being fixed, and to my understanding, everything is fixed and running smoothly at this time. And now let's move on to network statistics. There are currently 3,929 masternodes, which makes sense as that's a little less than 100, uh, 100 less than we had last week. And that accounts for the uh, 100 masternodes who are paying a dollar a month VPS services who've been taken out. And in mining, our hash rate is 2.66 tera hashes per second. And that's pretty much right back up there with the all time high that was reached about a month ago of about 2.7 tera hashes per second. To see how this has changed over time, go ahead and check out the hash rate chart for three months. And the last year and the last three years, the lifetime hash rate chart. Also worth noting as a sort of network statistic is that the number, rather the average number of transactions per block on the Dash network has roughly doubled within the past week, I would say. Uh, pr prior to the past week, the average transaction per block was maybe two or three and had been for many months. And if you'll notice on an explorer now, like uh, explorer.dash.org, that's roughly doubled to about seven to eight transactions per block. So worth noting. And let's take a look at price movement. Okay, in US dollars, we are currently trading at $45.94 per dash. This is with seven, well, just under 7.2 million coins. Uh, the last 24 hours have seen a $9.4 million trade volume, and the market cap then is $328 million. The market cap over the last three months has looked something like this. Market cap over the last year. And the market cap over Dash's lifetime is here. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite the curve there at the end, isn't it? Not even so much a curve as a cliff. <laughs> this price cliff upward, I don't know, it's hard for me to tell whether I should do things to the right or left. It's hard for me to imagine how you see me. Anyway, <laughs> this, this price cliff did not go unnoticed by the Merkle, Market Watch, Razor Forex, Coindesk, Crush the Street, One Israel News, Nigeria Today, and I'm sure other outlets that I didn't even see. And it should be noted, this is a stat I'd like to provide you with every week. This was at the suggestion of a viewer. What does this make Dash's treasury, available treasury per month? Well, with 6,917 Dash available to be created per month, that makes for a current treasury valuation of 316,483 US dollars in Dash. 
Speaking of, the next treasury payout, that is Superblock, is in 27 days. So if you are planning on putting in a proposal for funding, you'll want to do that sooner than later. And if you don't know how to do that, we'll go ahead and check out this video tutorial that I made showing you how. And now in social happenings, let's get social with some social happenings. The tweet. You know what tweet I'm talking about. It may well have garnered the most attention that I've seen of any crypto-related tweet that has ever been. That is, of course, the Roger Veer tweet about sending a Dash transaction for super cheap. And uh, yeah, I got so much attention. Uh, of course, community member Tao of Satoshi made a video about it as a sort of outreach effort to anybody who you know would consider themselves a member of the Bitcoin community, but maybe finds themselves joining Roger's sentiment of, hey, maybe it's nice to use a network that works better. We'll see what comes of that. What with the Bitcoin Jesus secretly talking to Casey Research about Dash, you, you, you never know what he's doing or saying. <laughs> uh, in another social happening, you may have heard Dash is scheduled to have an open house at our new offices at the ASU Skysong Innovation Center. It is scheduled for March 30th. All are invited. There will be free food, uh, free Dash giveaway. Uh, I'll speak, Ryan Taylor will speak, Evan Duffield will speak, and as I had said, all are invited. So go ahead and see if you or your friends or your mom can join. And then finally, in social happenings, I do think this qualifies as a social thing because scams. Surprise, there are scams on the internet. And as Dash has gotten more popular more recently, more scams targeting Dash users have popped up. Off the top of my head, of course, there was Node Miner, it was posing as a sort of mining software that would steal your Dash. Coinvert, fake exchange, would steal your Dash. Uh, and the infamous dash-wallet.com scam would steal your dash, stay away. If you come across any new unknown software and you're wondering, hey, should I try this out? For heaven's sake, come to the r dash pay subreddit or the Dash Nation Slack or the dash.org slash forum and ask around to get feedback and the experience of others regarding that particular software. And for our final segment, current opportunities. The Dash Force, the Treasury proposal Dash Force, is offering an incentive to help uh, kick off the Dash buying market on Bitfinex. So if you are willing to put in a buy order for at least $250 worth of Dash on Bitfinex, Dash Force will tip you a half a Dash. If you're willing to put in an order for $500, they'll tip you a full dash. And if you're willing to put in an order for $1,000, they will tip you two whole dash. You can find out more details and any possible restrictions, monetary or time or otherwise may exist uh, by following the link in the description below. And lastly, in current opportunities, the Dash Core team is currently hiring C++ developers, up to eight of them, and referrals are most welcomed. I don't know if that means that there's a sort of tip involved if you end up referring someone who gets hired, but I think it's a safe bet to say that there at least might be. If Ryan doesn't tip you, I'll tip you. Just let me know. <laughs> so again, you'll find the details about the C++ job openings in the description section as well. So that's it for Dash Detailed this week. What am I saying? Not this week. That's it for Wednesday, because what? Dash Detailed is launching our new Spotlight series on Fridays. So come back on Friday, same time, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, for our first in the Spotlight series. I'll see you then.